The Plainville Board of Education. Preparing students for success in a changing global society. Okay. We are going to call the meeting to order for the Plainville Board of Education, December 16th, 19, uh, 2000, 2019. <laughs> um, and I'll start with our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Ms. Palmieri, would you lead us? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we're going to begin our meeting with some special presentations. And so I will pass things over to uh, Superintendent LePage. Thank you. I'm going to head up to the podium first several special presentations tonight, so give me one second. Oh. I think it's on. Yeah. All right, very good. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I want to welcome you tonight to our Board of Education meeting and for a few special recognitions we like to begin our Board of Ed meetings with um, some acknowledgments and the recognitions of uh, some outstanding happenings in town so and in our school district. So first I'd like to start by welcoming up our, our coach of the uh, 2019, I got the year right, <laughs> um, Plainville Middle School soccer team, Mr. Kennedy. Come on up and join me. So in speaking to Mr. Farrell, who wished he could be here tonight, we had to move this board meeting because of um, last week the uh, football team went to the state semifinals, so we, we moved the board meeting so to free up board members and administrators who wanted to attend the uh, football game, so congratulations on their season. Um, so here we are tonight, and Mr. Farrell's at an athletic director's conference, so he wasn't able to join us tonight. Uh, he is away. But I wanted to take this moment to acknowledge and congratulate our middle school boys soccer team for an outstanding undefeated season at the middle school of Plainville this year. So congratulations to all the boys who worked so hard. <laughs> now having a, a recent state championship uh, high school team and this year, uh, going down to watch them play in the semi, was it semifinals. Yeah, they did an outstanding job against a tough team. So our future of soccer looks bright. But I want to give Mr. Kennedy uh, a minute to say a few words about the team. Thank you. Uh, when I got the group together in the back there a couple minutes ago, the first thing they asked me is, do, do we have to talk? Do we have to? Is there like a speech? No. no. So they were. They were relieved for that. But um, I just want to share a couple quick things. Uh, I mean, great accomplishment this year for them going undefeated. Uh, one particular moment that I remember during the season was usually the, the team is in a certain formation or a strategy that we're trying to do throughout the game. And at one point, there were a couple players that I noticed were way out of position. They were in you know, a spot that was closer to the goal than they, when, than they should have been. I'm trying to figure out what's going on out there. Are they not listening to what we're supposed to be doing? And then I quickly figured out that they noticed that there were certain players on the team that had not scored goals yet that season. So they were trying to figure out ways to kind of move some of the players around to give those other players an opportunity to score a goal of their own. And it's, it's just one of those things that, you know, you look back on and, it doesn't matter how many goals were scored throughout the season, how many games you won, but it's those moments that you, that you realize that these, these boys were really working together. They really acknowledged themselves and each other on the field, and uh, they did a wonderful job all season long. Uh, one of the other things is when we do penalty kicks, I don't have a certain player that takes our penalty kick. Uh, at times, if there's a penalty near the penalty box, a certain player, whoever was closest or whoever was in involved in the penalty, they're the ones that take it. And that was another point in the season that uh, a couple players gave up their penalty kicks for other players to, to get an opportunity to get a, uh, a shot on goal. So uh, those are the two things that I remember, along with the games and the undefeated season that we had. But these these guys are uh, an awesome group to work with. I wish them the best of luck, the eighth graders that are moving on to the high school. 
I hope they continue. And for the sixth and seventh graders, I hope to see you next year. And we'll see if we can keep this going. Thank you. So we're going to call you up, and we'd like to take a group photo in front of the backdrop here. First, Mr. Kennedy, great job of coaching this excellent team. Davion Andrews. Okay. You can tell me. Make sure it's, no. This is from the September roster, so I don't know if anyone. Uh, Aiden Ben. Yeah, I knew it. Evan Giannini. Brian Grabowski. <laughs> this is good practice for graduation, too, in high school. <laughs> Shake with the right, take with the left. Chase Gray. <laughs> Zyman Hollis. Alvaro Hernandez Pineda. I'm sorry. That's not it. Get that too. Cole Jones. <laughs> Three strikes, I'm up. Eric Kolch. Kolch. Kolk. Eric Kolk. Marcel Kucharski. Gerardo Lopez Cruz. <laughs> Jameson McGinnis. <laughs> Gino Palaya. Elijah Plesher. Joshua Powell. Christopher Rollo. And Braden Tishia. So again, great season to our boys, and let's get in front of the uh, backdrop for a nice group photo. Congratulations once again. Now, if you'd like to stay for the next hour or so for the board meeting, you're more than welcome to. 
<laughs> you'll, probably, you'll probably be getting a call, an email, a text, and uh, all kinds of messages in the morning about something. There's weather coming, so we'll see what happens, but I'll do my best. Have a good night. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> I think Yeah. Everybody here. Bye, thank you. Sean, Sean recovering from his first day? Yeah. <laughs> All right, this time we'll transition over to our everyday heroes. <laughs> first of all, it's my, my privilege to acknowledge Chris Couture. Did I turn this back? No. I'll get back on track. Chris, who's, who has joined us with his lovely wife this evening. We're uh, fortunate to have Mr. Couture teaching math at our middle school. He was nominated as an everyday hero. Actually, uh, it, was, it was about a month or so ago uh, by Ms. Schlosser. Ms. Schlosser, unfortunately, she was gonna, going to be able to be here at last meeting, but we had to change it, so she couldn't be here tonight, but she wanted to um, acknowledge her colleague. And this may seem, to some, this may seem to be um, you know, not a life-changing thing that Mr. Couture did if they knew what he does in the classroom every day and that he's a veteran and he gives back to the community and all the other things that he does. But pile on to that, this selfless act. So I'll just read what she wrote instead of going on. Uh, Chris has gone above and beyond for a student who he does not know. Chris saw that the student was distraught after having broken his headphones. I don't even know if you remember. Do you remember? He could have very easily walked away and not given it a second thought. He did not do this. He found headphones that he thought the student would like and purchased them for him. While to Chris, this seemed like a small thing, it truly was huge for that student. So that was from Ms. Schlosser. And I added, Chris, in addition to being a proud U.S. veteran, is an excellent math, math teacher at the middle school and a positive and influential member of the middle school team. We are fortunate to have caring and selfless individuals like Chris on our staff. This is one small example of the more general truth about Plainville teachers and staff that are kind-hearted and good to kids. And this is a great example of that. So, Mr. Couture, come on up and get your Everyday Hero Award. Thank Next, it's my privilege to acknowledge Deb Peichel. Mrs. Peichel has, goes above and beyond through her innovative ideas and willingness to assist. She's always looking to collaborate with teachers, and she truly wants to help all students be successful. She has been an integral collaborator with the Plainville High School English Department, and she has inspired and helped us in countless ways. I can say from just from working with Deb on committees and just seeing her work ethic and how much she cares about kids, whether it's at the elementary level or, and of course now at the high school for the last few years, it's been three years already, or four, fourth year. Um, the, the transition has been seamless and just uh, really transformed the, the library media center. So she's uh, the co-chair of the NIAS steering committee, has done a lot for the Plainville High School after making tremendous contributions at the elementary. Maker space was uh, in large part due to Ms. Peichel, so. Um, we're lucky to have you, and I'm glad to see that uh, Ms. Dowsett, I always want to call her Plecharzik, uh, Mrs. Dowsett, uh, wanted to acknowledge you as well. Thank you. Deb Peichel, Everyday Hero.
And that concludes our special recognitions. Thank you. And you two can go home. So just to add um, a little something, Mr. LePage was talking about, you know, the act of, that Mr. Uh, Kuchard took and how it was a small act and maybe didn't seem like a big thing to people. Um, I just read something the other day about the importance of small acts. And, um, and I also, talk to people a lot about small acts and especially when it comes to kids because you just never know what's going on in a child's head um, and what they've been going through and little tiny things little acts of kindness can make a big difference to a kid um, so we appreciate all those little acts you do every single day and thank you so that brings us to our approval of minutes do we have a motion? Madam Chairman, I request the approval of the minutes of the November 11th regular meeting of the Plainville Board of Education. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Motion to second. Any questions or any corrections? Ooh, I think our, our microphones are too close. Um, any questions or corrections? Um, all in favor? Signify aye. by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Um, do we have a second set of minutes? Madam Chairman, I request approval of the minutes of the special meeting of the Plainville Board of Education on November 11, 2019, which was a combined finance and <coughs> facilities meeting. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions or corrections on this? All right. Hearing none, all in favor signify by voting aye. 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 Any opposed? and any abstentions. All right, thank you. Uh, that takes us to citizens' comments. Anyone in? Uh, I think you have, uh, do we have another? Oh, order. yes. We have a uh, request to approve the minutes of the special meeting of the Board of Education on November 25th, 2019. Thank you. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions or corrections? All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? All right, thank you very much. Now, citizens' comments. And uh, anyone wishing to speak to the Plainville Board of Education can come to the podium, give your name and address, and uh, we'll be given three minutes to speak. Anyone wishing to speak to the Board of Education? Anyone wishing to speak to the Board of Education? And last, anyone wishing to speak to the Board of Education? All right, don't all run here at once. All right? Um, and that brings us to our council liaison. Um, we did change the date of this meeting because, um, as Mr. LePage mentioned, we were um, trying to make sure we had folks able to go to the, uh, the game, the football game. And so we have a report from Ms. Puglisi, who is currently across town at a town council meeting. And so that's what happens when you change meetings, right? Yes. You have conflicts. Um, so she did, however, provide us with a report, so I'm just going to read that uh, to you. Um, CCM Property Tax Reform Commission. Um, CCM has uh, created a commission to craft a new property tax relief initiative to bring before the residents of Connecticut in 2020. Robert Lee is serving on this commission. It should be noted that uh, Connecticut's property tax collections average almost $3,000 per person. person which is the third highest amount in the United States. Plainville property taxes account for 68.6% .6 of the total revenue for the town budget. Uh, this commission will seek to tackle three main questions. First is how best to fund services other than relying heavily on property taxes. Second, how to deliver services in the most cost-effective manner. And third, how, how state government can effectively stabilize its surging pension and retirement benefit costs. 
So the goal of the commission is to come up with a recommendation that would reduce property taxes by a minimum of 25%. Once the commission has finalized its work, CCM, which is the Conference of Connecticut Municipalities, I should have said that, right? Um, intends to launch an intensive grassroots campaign to inform voters of the recommendation. Okay. Um, small Cities Grant Program Grant Award. Last month, the state notified Plainville that we are awarded a Small Cities Grant in the amount of $1.5 million to make improvements to the Woodmere Manor and Centerview Village Senior Housing Complexes managed by the Housing Authority. And under upcoming news, uh, Mike Widger will be retiring at the end of December. Mike's been with the town for 34 years in the Roadways Department, uh, wishing him a healthy, long retirement. He'll probably look, be glad he doesn't get a call tomorrow morning too, right, uh, with the bad weather. Um, the joint meeting with the Town Council and Board of Education is scheduled for January 7, 2020 and is anticipated to be in the Library Auditorium. Um, Christmas tree disposal. I don't like reading about disposal of Christmas trees before we've even celebrated them. <laughs> but anyway, uh, trees may be brought to the Town Transfer Station for disposal, uh, as has been done in the past, and a container will be available for drop-off. The Town will also be issuing a notice and a schedule for limited curbside pickup. And that was the report from Spiglisi. We thank her for being so diligent as to always give us that. And that brings us to the superintendent's report, Mr. LePage. Thank you. I'd like to have uh, Mr. Adlerstein, our director of finance and operations, go to the podium to share some uh, information about the process for our budget development and also the capital budget that is being proposed to you and that was shared with you at the special meeting on November 11th. So this is the same information that was presented on you, uh, presented to you on November 11th. It's been a long time since then and um, we are going to ask you to approve both the budget calendar and the capital budget. So we want to take some time tonight to just go through it again, both to refresh your memory and to make sure um, any questions are answered before we ask you to, to vote on this. So the first thing, sorry, these are going to be kind of small. <laughs> uh, this is the calendar. It's the same calendar you saw last time, no changes. It's, it's up to date as of right now. The yellow lines still don't have dates, um, so it's still a work in process. The top part, um, top 25% is already done. We actually began our budget process in August with our coherence conference with the administrators. Really at that point, not getting down into the numbers, but um, really talking high level coherence, how do the pieces of the district all fit together, best fit together. And from there, um, we started budget work when school began. We work from shared spreadsheets. We have one shared spreadsheet that goes through account by account um, the, the entire district budget. And we have another spreadsheet that goes through person by person, the entire personnel budget. And that's where we work collaboratively. Um, every administrator inputs their information and does their analysis all in the same spreadsheet. And so that really helps us make sure nothing's missed, helps us work together, helps us really envision um, how we can best move the district forward. As of now, we've had all the budget meetings with the administrators. We do that in November. So we met with each, each administrator. The administrators made their proposal for their individual budgets. And currently, we're looking at staffing utilization. How do we, how do we best have the right people at the right place at the right time doing the right thing? Um, something that, that Mr. LePage has really been focused on, really um, pushing us to focus on. And all this is gonna to lead to um, the bracket in the middle of this, um, where you see Mr. LePage's budget for the first time. We have our budget workshops, January 21st, 23rd, if needed. I think it's February 2nd, is that this? Uh, and um, it's a great opportunity, pardon? Is that right? Yeah, that, that, that's a typo. It has to be the second. Hmm. Sorry about that. Um, those three budget workshops are a great opportunity for folks to come out and, uh, and really learn a lot about the district budget. It's done in the, um, in the learning commons, so it can be interactive. Um, 
and uh, the board typically asks a lot of good questions and we really go through it with a fine tooth comb working <coughs> toward the budget that really meets the student needs and is in an efficient and as effective manner as possible. So we're going to ask you to vote on this tonight. Um, again, it's a work in process, but just to make sure you agree with the timeline that we've put forward. Kevin? Okay. Moving on to our capital budget, you've already seen this. The bottom third of this slide is what we're going to ask you to vote on tonight. It's a summary of what we're going to ask you to vote on tonight. We just have the, the past two years or the, the capital budget from last year up at the top and in the middle is the current year's capital budget just to give you a, a sense of what we're proposing this year compared to prior years. We break our capital plan down into facilities and technology. I really want to um, thank Mr. Bustle, who's here tonight, and Mr. Ross, who's here tonight, who have put together the details behind this, um, not just this year, but, but each year, and really put together thoughtful budget proposals um, and are here to answer any questions you might have. Just looking at this, one thing that jumps out at me, just looking at um, last year, 1819, the, the top third of the slide is, um, is facilities. Um, Mr. Bustle initially proposed $116,000 um, facility capital budget, which he justified. And just for fight, because of financial constraints, you can see as we went down through the process, we ended up not spending any money on capital that year. Um, similar, if you go down into the middle of the slide, 1920, Mr. Bustle proposed and justified $436,000. And if you go down, um, you can see that we eventually, the town <coughs> voted on and approved $31,000. So a lot of those needs haven't gone away. They've really been pushed forward, and a lot of them are in the, the proposal that you are, we're asking you to approve tonight. Um, technology, just looking down the technology column, not quite as much reduction. Um, I know uh, Mr. Ross has really worked to perfect his rotational technology plan that, um, that supports the curriculum the best we can. And so he's, he's really, I think, gone a long way toward perfecting that, where right now, um, Mr. Ross proposes a technology plan that's fairly level year to year that rotates um, needs and equipment in and out. And um, the, the idea is if we stay caught up, there won't be any one big need in any one year. Um, and let me, just because there's, these are such big numbers, uh, what we're going to propose to you is $326,000 of um, facilities um, capital and 356400 of technology totaling $682,400. Uh, if, if you'd indulge me, let me just go through item by item. Again, this is going to be small, really small. This is the, uh, this is the format that the town asks us to, um, to provide them. And the uh, columns, the five columns that are grayed out to the left are last year's. And the dark gray column is the year that we're going to ask you to approve. And yeah, it's going to be a little hard to. So uh, let me just talk through it. And I don't think you really need to do that, Kevin. Thanks for trying. The, uh, the item number one on the list is, and again, you've seen this. This, was, this is the exact same information, the same numbers that we went through in, in committee on November 11th. First item is to build a secure entrance, uh, $70,000. This is the second part of that plan of that project. The first project was to design the high school's secure entrance, which um, we put into the year end um, at the end of 2018-19. So that, um, that, that design is actually in process, almost done. At the time, we thought that building the secure entrance would be about $50,000. Um, we now believe it's going to be $70,000, and actually latest estimates are even more than that. Or, um, the last estimate that Mr. Bolson got was 85000 So it's still a work in process. What we have in the plan is $70,000. $70, Next item is uh, replacing the swimming pool heater. I think that's been underwater a few times. Um, by Mr. Bustle's estimate, it's really on its last, its last legs and really can't, can't go another year. Item three is repointing the 1954 section of the high school for $50,000. Mr. Bustle spread that out over three years. So instead of one big $150,000 um, capital outlay in one year, he spread it over three years. This is an item that gets pushed out each year. It's been on the capital plan for, since I've been here, I think. And uh, each, year, each year it gets pushed out. At some point, we're really gonna have to do it. I don't know if this is that year or not, but we recommend at this stage in the process that it be on our plan. Um, next item is uh, 
security improvements, cameras, door access. This is stuff that was in a security grant that we did not get. So it was detailed in a security grant. We were hoping to get the security grant, didn't come through. Uh, it's kicked forward from last year to this year. Taflon landscape improvements for $25,000. These will, and help me out, Steve, these will, um, these are necessary for the building, but they'll also save on maintenance costs because it's, um, they're, Uh, next item is as you walked in, you may have noticed if you looked up or you've noticed in the past the peeling canopy as you walk in through the entrance uh, right across from the cafeteria. This is uh, $20,000 is to, uh, Mr. Bustle's worked hard to try to, he's, he's had several shots of trying to make that go away. And this is to make it go away once and for all. Uh, item number seven, Taflon and Linden parking lot, parking lot improvements, sidewalk, storm drain, capital work stuff that really needs to, to, to be done at Taflon and Linden. Um, item number eight is uh, a replacement of the walk-in condensing unit at the refrigerator at Linden. It doesn't owe us anything. It's an ancient piece of uh, equipment. I think they've been working on trying to keep it together, but at this point, um, the parts are so old that really the whole unit needs to be replaced. Item number nine is a uh, building automation system at Linden, $18,000. Just want to point out that next year, uh, the same building automation system is um, on the list to be upgraded at the high school for $150,000. So a big ticket item for next year. I'm not gonna go into detail on the, uh, the last four columns, but they are the years, the, the uh, subsequent years, the outlying years. We, we are asked to put those on this, this plan and it's important that we have them on this plan just so that we have good visibility of what's coming up and we can do a good job with the town at recognizing the needs of the, of the buildings and um, technology. Item number 10, um, replacing cleaning equipment. Mr. Martin has been, we've put, been putting $15,000 and Mr. Martin has his own rotational plan for cleaning equipment to try to be very efficient and effective with, um, with custodians and do the best we can. And that's been working very well. If we can just do that each year, it works well on allowing the custodians to keep up their equipment. So that's it for um, this year or the, the 2021 budget for um, facilities. I'm gonna skip down to technology. And again, Mr. Ross has really um, done a good job at getting his rotational plan down. You know, I think he's tried several different configurations and, and right now has it down. So the first item on his list is student Chromebooks and he has um, replacement of Chromebooks, I think uh, six, so 691 elementary grade, $135,000. And that's roughly the amount that he has in the capital plan each year to, um, to, for, to do the equivalent replacements each year. By doing that, it allows us to support our curriculum the way we've been supporting it. And it's really intertwined now into our curriculum. So these are things we really, really if we wanna continue our curriculum the way we've designed it, we have to make these investments. Um, next one is staff Chromebooks and laptops. For the most part, this is staff laptops. 100,000 of the 128,000 is, is staff laptops. Uh, I think they're over six years old now, so we've let them go quite a bit, and I think they're getting to the point where they're well beyond their useful life. Um, <clears throat> next one down is second year of a two-year plan for makerspace and steam hardware. That was um, something you guys approved last year. We took a tour of the auditorium, the middle school auditorium. This is the second year of that plan that's in here, as well as the second year of, um, of elementary makerspace. Same amount of money for each elementary school um, that continues the investment we're making this current year. Almost done, two more. Uh, server firewall replacement for $40,000. That's an item that's split with the town. So we pay $40,000, the town has a similar amount, $40,000 in their budget. Next item down is network upgrades for $10,000. That's actually a good investment because um, it's E-rate matched on everybody's phone bill. A little bit of money is held back and, and uh, that money goes into a big fund, big national fund. Schools get to use that for some of their network type upgrades. For us, it's 60% matched. So we pay $10,000, but then 60% of it's paid for through this E-rate fund. So it's a, it's a good investment and something we need to do. And I think that brings us down to all the items in the request for 2021. Total is $682,400, broken down $326,000 for, for facilities, $356,400 for, tech, for technology. Um, just looking at the outlying year, one number I really wanna highlight in uh, 2023, we used to have a laundry list of items for the middle school. 
those aren't there anymore. Instead, there's the, um, the amount that was put out a few years ago, the anticipated amount, if we were going to do a renovate like new, $35 million. And so instead of having that laundry list of items, at some point we came to the realization that it would, have, it would um, cost more to do that laundry list of items and do a renovate like new project, cost more locally, and have, the, have state funding for a renovate like new project. And so I think the determination that the recommendation for a renovate like new project is coming. And so that's why the $35 million is listed here. Um, if you just bear with me for one more slide, Kevin. This is just, uh, Mr. Bustle put together a very brief timeline of what that renovate like new project looks like. So starting with 1920 this year, quantifying needs, bringing the architect in, really looking at the middle school and, uh, and starting the process. 2021, next year, start the design, hire that architect, establish some goals. 21, 22, um, start, uh, start looking at the financials, have an estimate, set the budget. 22, 23, have the referendum. 23, 24, in the summer of 23, break ground. <laughs> so that's, that's the real high level um, <laughs> schedule for um, the middle school renovate like new that we really do start, need to start thinking about. And I think that's it, questions. <clears throat> Thanks, Mr. Thank Edelson. Okay, the next item on the on my report is the Wheeler Building Project update. I'd like to ask Principal Batchelder to show some uh, photos of the work that's been done uh, most recently and uh, just give a, an overview of the next steps in the process closing out that project. Good evening. Thanks, Mr. LePage. Good evening, Board of Ed members. Um, thanks for allowing me to be here tonight to give you an update. We can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel at Wheeler School, truly. Um, if you recall, the east wing and the west wing, so primary and secondary wings are all done and completed, been completed for a while. Um, the last wing remaining is the south wing, um, and that's where the old front entrance was, if you recall. You can see right here, this is the bus entryway. Um, looking in to go in the doors, and then as you go out, the key card access is already working. Um, they did a lot of construction all through the fall and into even up to last week. The cones are all down and everything's down and they're ready to have the buses. Um, that entry go be open and the bus, kids come off the buses and come through that entry rather than near the door near the art room. Um, but that whole wing now, that south wing is done pretty much done. So I'm just gonna go through real quickly to give you uh, some visuals of some of the rooms that we have here. So again, this is a bus entryway, it's clear now. Kevin? This is one of the pre-K classrooms. Um, it looks very messy right now because all the desks and things are put in there. Some of those desks have to come out of there and relocate to other classrooms at Wheeler School. Um, but as you can see, all the shelving is put in, you know, um, the floor is done. It was clean, it'll be re-cleaned again. Kev? Um, this is another pre-K classroom, another look at it. Um, again, they have cubbies, you can see on the side there, they're all in. All the furniture is gonna be coming over next week. So I'll give you, at this point in time, I'll give you what the transition's like for our pre-K teachers and students. This weekend, uh, or this week already, Steve Bustle, I want to thank again for coming over this week. Um, he's already started moving our um, two teachers out of swing space, a school psychologist and um, one special ed teacher. And we're kind of moving them out so that we can get some of this other furniture that I was talking about that's in there, the desk and stuff back to those rooms. But beginning uh, thir this Thursday and Friday, the pre-K teachers at Linden, the two pre-K teachers that will be coming to Wheeler, they'll have substitute teachers in their classroom. That'll give them the opportunity to pack up their classroom before they go on break. During break, Steve Bustle, Scott Martin, and the crew will continue to bring over boxes and all the pre-K furniture that we have at Linden that'll be used in these two classrooms at Wheeler. Um, on, let's say, on January, what's the date I have here? We go back to school kindergarten through fifth grade goes back to school on um, January 2nd, that's a Thursday. And 
uh, instead of pre-K coming back, they'll be off until Monday, January 6th. So on January 2nd and 3rd, Thursday and Friday, our pre-K teachers will come in, Mrs. Mullen, Mrs. Donovan, will unpack those classrooms, their classrooms, set everything up, and then on Friday, January 3rd, we'll have an open house for our pre-K parents and students to come in and do a walkthrough at 2.30 in the afternoon. And then, you know, by Monday, January 6th, we'll be ready to have them come back and the students and pre-K students and teachers will resume on Monday, January 6th. Um, I'm trying to see if I left anything out there. Um, the rest of the, the South Wing, and I'll go through these pictures and show you. Why don't I do that first? Kevin, you want to keep going? This is an example of a pre-K changing table in one of the bathrooms. This is the new computer lab. Um, it doesn't have the furniture yet, and I'll explain that in a minute. Go ahead. This is a school psychologist's office. A picture of Mr. Bustle in action, getting his hands. He's right in the thick of it. I did that purposely. I asked him to come over today. He says, I thought you were going to help me. I said, how can I help you if I'm taking pictures at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> We had a couple laughs, but he worked very hard today. Thanks, Steve, um, helping the school psychologist. This is a special education resource room. This is one of them. This is our new staff room, which is beautiful. A lot smaller, but it's really, really nice in there. Um, and we have, like, if you can see beyond that staff member that's on the right side, there's this water fountain that you can put your, uh, you know, your water cup right in there, and it fills it up with filter water. It's, it's luxurious. Everybody loves that. It's really nice. Go ahead, next one. The special ed resource room. This is the second special ed resource room. Um, and this is the music room, which is beautiful. Mr. Monsimino is going to be happy if you um, go to the next slide right here. This is his room where he'll have band lessons. Um, for the last six years since I've been at Wheeler, Mr. Bonsimino's taught band anywhere and everywhere, um, mainly in the small conference room that we had at Wheeler, and now he's gonna have a room devoted for him. So I'm, I'm very excited for him and our students for that. Any more? Yeah. Okay, so the rest of the, I can explain the pre-K and their transition plan back to Wheeler. Um, the rest of the teachers, the two special ed teachers, the music teacher, and the school psychologist, school psychologist has her furniture in there, but the other teachers were waiting to get furniture approved from the building committee. And that meeting is scheduled for tomorrow night. And, you know, hopefully we will get it approved. It is additional furniture. Um, you know, the plan was, I guess, to have some existing furniture, but the existing furniture is really old and rickety. I mean, it, it's like 20, over 20 years old. So we want to put forth to the building committee some additional furniture for approval. Um, we have a couple other items up for approval, too. So once that furniture, hopefully, like I said, gets approved from the building committee, then once it's delivered, we'll begin to transition the other teachers back to that, those rooms. But as of right now, I mean, they're, they're pretty much done. I mean, ONG Construction has very few people left on site. They're just there doing punch list items all around the school. We have a list of punch list things that have to get done. Um, Matt Olszewski, the superintendent of the ONG of the project, he and I will go around together and look at those punch list items. As a matter of fact, he made a big punch list item item punch list was really long and then I had our teachers and myself make one and with the exception of one more on ours we were evenly matched so we're looking good there and we just want to make sure all those items are, are done before they leave but we're pretty much done um, so that's it we're pretty excited to be done I know I'm very excited to be done <laughs> so um, and I'd like to thank you for all your support throughout the last couple of years it's been a it's been a journey, but well worth it. It's a beautiful place. Do you have any questions? Just one quick question. Sure. Uh, Andrew. Um, on, the, on, the music, you know, on the music room, that, will that be ready uh, by mid-January or with the furniture? Or is, or is that depending things go well tomorrow night? What, yeah, um, the it, furniture. It will depend. I don't know if it will be mid-January. It's really... It's, well, first, the building committee has to approve it tomorrow night. If they do, then there's some ordering that has to get done by Insalco, the furniture company. And then there's all, oh, I've never, they've never done what they said they're going to do in terms of deliveries. You know, they always have a date. Everything's late. It never comes early. Um, so I really couldn't tell you, Mr. White, about January. I would say more likely the end of January. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. That's you know. still everything is pretty much ahead, ahead of. Oh yeah, the project was ahead. expected to be done by February 2020, yeah. and we're we're far ahead. Of, yep. You know. So. Any That's other good. questions? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? I just want to thank Mr. Batchelder. Um, you know, if, if you if you need a principal who's on top of a renovation project, Andrew is certainly that person. Yeah. Um, and with the help of Steve Bustle and you know, unbelievable, of course, you know, just our, our whole crew. But yeah. Andrew, Steve, Matt Olszewski has been amazing from yeah. uh, superintendent from ONG. But well, thanks, Steve. I mean, I couldn't do it without Kevin Ross and Steve Bustle, though they've been. Oops. Sorry, Kevin. They've I mean, been right I'm there. You too. No, I mean Kevin Ross has he's, he's there a lot. found some very in integral things that we need to have done. Just you know, for example, just having a speaker that works in the office for the announcements that we didn't have. Um, he keeps the Ferguson Electric on their feet too. <laughs> mm -hmm. He knows a lot about that stuff too. And, and Steve Bustle and Scott Martin have been tremendous. So it, it's been a collective effort by everybody. Right. Thanks, though. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Our last presentation was going to be uh, done by Chris Farrell. This is a new idea that he that we discussed and we agreed would be a nice idea at the end of each season to have him come in with some spotlights. You already saw the spotlight of our undefeated um, middle school boys soccer team. But in addition to that, just giving you an overview of the season in athletics, which are going tremendously well in, in uh, Plainville. So pinch hitting, um, pun intended, even though it's not the right season. For Mr. Farrell, who's away at a, an AD's conference, Mr. Lewandowski is going to present the uh, athletics season update for the fall of 2019. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. It's on. All right, so yes, I'm not Chris Farrell, but I'm going to Good fill job. in. I'm going to do the best I can. So it's my pleasure to share his review of the fall 2019 athletic season. So on the screen right now, on this slide, it shows the athletic department's mission statement along with the core values expected of all our student athletes. These core values were developed two years ago by the head varsity coaches and Chris Farrell. <coughs> Within athletics, we strive for our student athletes to be accountable, competitive, respectful, loyal, motivated, and appreciative. Our goal is to build positive character to, to obtain positive results. At the middle school, there was great participation in the fall athletic offerings, which consisted of girls soccer, boys soccer, and the co-ed cross country team. A total of 66 students participated on these three teams, which is a great number. All of the teams did well. You just saw tonight, boys soccer went undefeated at 8-0. Girls soccer lost their opening game, but then reeled off seven straight victories to go seven and one, so they had a great season. And the co-ed cross country team competed in a total of eight events and saw improvement in every single race. For high school athletics, again, great season. There were approximately 35% of the student body participating in fall athletics, which equates to 226 students. That's a great number competing in, uh, in our athletics for the fall, so we're hoping that that number remains constant throughout. Uh, the fall offerings for high school are cross country, girls swimming, volleyball, girls soccer, boys soccer, cheerleading, and football. Highlights for the fall season were boys soccer and football both making the semifinals of the CIAC state tournament. Girls soccer won the Ted Alex Award, which is the official sportsmanship award. And the athletes participated in a variety of community service projects, including the volleyball team raising close to $1,000 for the Side Out Foundation, which is a nonprofit breast cancer charity. It was also a very successful year for personal athletic awards, as Plainville saw 79 students meet the criteria for the all academic, all Central Connecticut conference teams. To meet this criteria, the athletes needed to earn a varsity letter and have an academic average of 88% or higher. So this is a great achievement for our students. There's a lot of them, which is great for us as a district, and these students epitomize what it means to be student athletes. So not only did we have the academic awards, but we also had many students earning all conference and all state honors for their athletic play. 
for being some of the best athletes in the Central Connecticut Conference, Plainville saw three students from boys soccer, four students from swimming, one student from girls soccer, and seven students from football earn all conference honors. We also saw three students earn all state honors for being among the best in their sport in the state of Connecticut. Patrick Rizuski from boys soccer and Adrian Marcos and Christian Collin from football. And that concludes the review for the fall 2019 athletic season. And if you have any questions, I'd be sure to ask Chris Farrell and get back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewandowski, for standing in and doing a great job of summarizing a very successful fall season for our athletics. Um, thanks, uh, my, my sincere thanks to Chris Farrell, who does a tremendous job, um, available all hours of the day um, for any, any issues or questions or just supporting the teams. And whether it's a student who's injured, he's there, you know, he's a, he's a terrific athletic director and he's an asset to our district. So thanks to him. Um, Finally, that was my last report, but I did want to share a, a detail about spring sports. I know it's been, um, it was something that came up, you know, through our budget process last year with it being cut um, due to the, the you know, un, unanticipated uh, reduction in our budget that we, we had no other place to go. So we um, did reduce the budget by the amount of spring sports. As everyone or most people know by now, thanks to the wonderful uh, news coverage, um, Devin and others. Um, we had a very successful uh, November 5K uh, fun run and turkey trot, and it was a competitive race, and it, it counted as a 5K. We had people coming from many different towns to run in it and complimented what a great race it was. But that race uh, raised over, it went up after the race by quite a bit, over $9,400, I believe, was the last total. Uh, we were looking to raise a total of 12000 uh, Between that and also due to the fact that there weren't enough girls on girls soccer to to have both a JV and a varsity team, um, but the JV team was budgeted for in last year's budget for this year. We were able to reallocate those funds as well to help offset uh, the remainder of the spring sports that we need. So as I shared with families in a, in a message last week, one of my long messages, uh, spring sports have been officially uh, reinstated thanks to the efforts of the Board of Education members of the town, the dedicated parents who did so much for the 5K race. And, um, you know, some unfortunate, you know, that we don't have enough students to, to um, you know, hold all of the teams that we, that we had hoped for in the budget, but um, it ended up working out and reallocating those funds. So that was just a quick update on spring sports while we were talking about uh, athletics. I also wanted to um, just acknowledge that in front of you, you have uh, an article from the newspaper from uh, about the MSP Art Club that was uh, featured and um, also a, a nice little gift from those students as well. And I think you'll enjoy it. And thanks, Ms. Palmieri, for the cookies. And that's all I have for the superintendent's uh, report. All right. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions of the superintendent? No. Um, I, I will just say, too, that I kind of, I really like that the fall sports update. That's something we've never had before. I think it's, I think it's nice. It acknowledges students as well as teams, and I think it's a uh, nice addition. So we can pass that on to Mr. Farrell. I will. <laughs> All right. That brings us to our board subcommittee reports. Um, our student rep is uh, not here this evening. Um, we, if you look at the reports, we have facilities, policy, and finance, none of which met since we last met. Um, and we are going <coughs> to talk about the committees um, in a few minutes. So there, there really are no reports on, um, from facilities policy or finance. Um, so is there a report on the high school PAC, <coughs> Mr. White? Yes, there is. The high school PAC uh, met on um, <coughs> November 13th. At that time, uh, they had a, a balance in their account of $3,123.05. That included also the profit that they made of $535 on their, uh, their lime and pie uh, sale. Also, uh, they made uh, a profit from the homecoming carnival, which I think was a great event. They made an additional $22 in that selling the number one fingers. Um, they uh, also be doing the uh, 
the stadium seating for the graduation, which now will be June 12th, even if it snows many more times. <laughs> yes. uh, and so that'll be another one of their fundraisers. Their next me meeting is scheduled for January 8th. Okay, thank you. Um, the uh, PAC meeting for Tafan, Ms. Martinez. Yes, instead of meeting for a regular PTO meeting on December 5th, the PTO met to set up the book fair and to prepare for the Winterfest. The PTO really went above and beyond. There were so, so many things for the kids to do. They were able to have their photos taken in the photo booth, decorate ornaments, and visit with Santa. Students could either purchase hot cocoa for 75 cents to benefit the student council, or have a cup for free with a donation of two canned goods or two non-perishable food items for the Plainville Food Pantry. And the student council was also selling baked goods. The students be, were able to write letters to Santa and mail it in the Santa mailbox. The letters were then delivered to Macy's, and Macy's agreed to donate a dollar per letter they received to Make-A-Wish. Macy's will be donating $52 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation from the letters written by Tofflon students. They, of course, had their raffle table. And um, they tried something new this year. Students had the opportunity to pre-order plushie pals, which are pretty much like builder bears that they were able to create during the event. And while all that was going on and students were having their fun, parents and guardians were able to get some holiday shopping. In addition to the Scholastic Book Fair they had going on, there were 17 vendors. And um, Mrs. Legoyk, she always steps right up to help out. Uh, but this time I did want to mention that not only did she volunteer for the event, but so did Mr. Legoyk. And it's really appreciated and shows her level of commitment to the school. And the next PTO meeting will be on January 9th. Thank you. Mr. Legoyk probably had to do that if he wanted to like eat, ever eat again or something. <laughs> there was probably something there like that. Um, so Linden PTO, Ms. Wells. So Linden is in the midst of their holiday store week, which is starting tomorrow. But before you can have a holiday store, you have to have a wrapping party. So on December 5th, they had the 2019 Great Holiday Gift Store Wrapping Party. Teachers, staff, and parents gathered together, listened to holiday music, and wrapped thousands of presents. A special thanks goes out to Mr. Sanders, Gina Leonetti, Sarah Christ Christello Wartunic, Nancy Atuno, Christina Glasper, and all the teachers and staff and parent volunteers. A special thanks, special, special thanks out to the maintenance staff at Linden. Um, the gift shop is all set for all the students to participate, and the next PTO meeting is January 8th, 2020. 2020. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. That takes us to the middle school, um, St. Lawrence. Yeah. <clears throat> the MSP PTC um, meeting was snowed out on December 3rd, so their next meeting will be January 7th. All right. Thank you. And the Wheeler uh, PTO, Ms. Palmieri? Mm -hmm. um, Wheeler had its annual Grandparents' Day, which was a huge success. Wheeler had over 150 grandparents attend. Um, grandparents and grandkids stopped at the book fair, did a craft together in the cafe, and Dunkin' Donuts munchkins and hot chocolate. Um, the book fair opened on Grandparents' Day, and parent-teacher conference nights took in close to $8,000 in revenue. And on the evening of December 6, Wheeler had its annual Winter Fest sponsored by the PTO. There were raffle prizes, DJ and dancing, and Santa made a visit too. Fun was had by all. Thank you. Um, so the next report is the correct council report. I did attend the correct council in November. It's been a little ways since I attended that meeting. Um, we did have a legislative update, which is usually the highlight. However, most of that information is now a little on the old side. Um, but there will be a legislative breakfast coming up. Um, I want to say it's February 28th, but don't quote me on that. It's a little ways off yet. Crick uh, and Cabe will have a legislative breakfast up in Hartford. So we'll, we'll definitely make sure we, we know what that date is. Um, under the chairperson's report, I did uh, promise to talk about subcommittee a little bit more. We did meet, as, um, as noted in November, um, after our last meeting to talk about subcommittee structure. Um, and um, because of that meeting, we, we did determine we were going to re remove the advocacy report because generally we never had a report. 
um, and also change the turf report from a monthly reoccurring to uh, twice a year, I think it is, and it's falling under Mr. Adlerstein's report so we can kind of focus on the budget issues related with uh, the turf field, making sure that there is a fund that's built up for replacement and maintenance, um, which is our main concern there with that item at the moment. Um, so starting in January, we are gonna be revising our current committees to the following. Um, we are going to do a combined um, facilities and finance meeting um, and um, to and the, the the folks expressing interest in that uh, committee were Foster Kathy and Nicole um, we are going to have our normal policy committee meeting and we have Crystal Foster and uh, Deb Hardy expressing interest in that one um, the outreach committee which is a new committee that will um, deal with really um, communication and we're gonna need Mrs. <coughs> Ms. Lynn Davis, our expert communicator, um, to help us out with that one. Um, and on that committee, we have uh, Crystal and Foster and Nicole. Um, and then the curriculum committee, which is again a new committee, uh, Kathy Wells and Rebecca Martinez. Um, we are still waiting to hear on a couple of our members about what they might be interested in, so we will probably add a few folks here and there um, and so that's that so um, moving forward the the area of the uh, that we didn't discuss that much was the idea of how to um, formulate these committees a little more clearly and talk a little bit about what they're actually going to entail so we will be working on that a little bit before the committees meet and making sure that we have a clear uh, idea of what we want to be discussing uh, in those committees and maybe a timeline for when they would meet, what would make sense. Um, and we'll work with the administration on that one. Okay. So other than, other than that, I would just like to thank everybody for their support over the past month. Um, I, you know, I think it's a, uh, um, it's been a, a, a good transition and we are going forward in a positive direction um, and I appreciate um, appreciate everybody's assistance um, so with that I'm going to move us on to our um, unfinished business for which we have none unless anybody tells me otherwise uh, and we'll move into new business so we have a board open forum anyone like to Yes, Madam Chairman. I would just like to comment on the uh, hidden in plain sight event that took place at the middle school uh, during the middle school conferences. This, I think, uh, was very well attended and I think highly informative. I know that several of us sitting up here did get a chance to go uh, through that uh, room uh, that was set up and also our SRO, uh, Officer Martins, also did an excellent job. And I don't think there's any one of us who went in there that didn't have their eyes open as to uh, <coughs> what a parent and a grandparent really should be uh, aware of in, uh, in working with, with their uh, adolescent and preteen and teen children. And I would hope very much that we could do a repeat of this. Uh, this event was sponsored by the Coalition for Positive Youth Development, uh, headed by our inevitable uh, Lynn Davis back there, but uh, I think this is a type of event that really should be done again as a repeat of uh, this, this uh, academic year. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I would like to just say that I had the opportunity, um, time flies last week, I guess, to um, go to Florida and see the, the high school band perform. Um, I think some of you must have seen some of the videos all over social media. It was really awesome to see, you know, our band marching down with the castle in the background. It was really cool and to hear the jazz band and they did a great job and it was nice to see our very respectful um, band members walking around the park and seeing them out and about um, while we were visiting um, down there with them. They did a great job and a little plug, they have their holiday concert, which I absolutely love, um, on Wednesday night at 7.30, I believe it is, and that's gonna be a great evening. 
and there are some students with the United Way um, that will be collecting, it just happens to be Chris St. Lawrence and Olivia Wazurko who are collecting um, on behalf of the United Way some paper goods. I was asking him what that meant and he's like, I don't know, paper stuff. So like toilet paper, I guess, and napkins, paper towels, all that kind of stuff. So they'll be collecting that stuff on Wednesday. I think that's I just had, <clears throat> excuse me, a quick thing. I attended um, the first career day that I had ever um, been to, and my plan was just to um, watch and see what happened. But at the last minute, I was asked to actually um, talk about when I worked in minor league baseball. So I got to talk to three different groups of kids who were interested in working in sports, and it was really, it was a great experience. I'm really happy that um, I had the opportunity to do that. and. Um, hopefully I'll get to do it again next time. Um, and I just want to wish everyone a happy and healthy holiday and new year. I hope everyone gets some rest and ready for the new year. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay. So we'll move on. Um, our quarterly report for special ed will be next month in January. Um, and turf committee report will be uh, not until May. Gee, get off the hook easy, that one, Mr. Ellerstein. <laughs> um, and then we have our next discussion and approval, um, a request to approve, rather, the 2020-2021 uh, budget calendar. Can we get a motion? The, um, the yeah. dates, I think, on the slide that were up there were, were not correct. They are correct in your packet. Okay. So three dates. So we want to make a motion for the... Uh, I would so move, Madam Chairman, that we approve the budget calendar for 2020-2021. Second. second. Motion and a second. Um, any discussion on this? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any uh, opposed? Okay. Thank you. Motion passes. And then a uh, request approval uh, for the capital budget plan for 2020 and 2021. That's a mouthful, actually. Uh, can we get a motion on that? Madam Chairman, I request that we approve the capital budget plan that was represented again tonight for uh, the year 2020, 2021. Second. And a motion and a second. Um, any conversation or discussion on that? I would just say this is for us like a preliminary uh, not really yeah. preliminary, but it's it's the initial uh, approval of this, and then it does tend to unfortunately come back around and get looked at over and over again. But um, it is an important first step for us. So, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. And next we have um, a request for approval of the bargaining unit uh, for uh, this is our office professionals and clerks. Mm -hmm. So can we have a motion? Madam Chairman, I request that we approve the collective bargaining agreement for AFSCME Local 1303-053, Council 4, for the office professionals and clerks. This uh, contract, I believe, has been approved by both sides. Okay. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right. Is there anything anyone wants? Did anybody serve on that committee? I can't remember. Did you serve in the committee? Anything you want to add or you don't have to, but you know. No, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Thank you. It was a long time ago. <laughs> I know, right? That's, I was going to say, it seemed like that one took a longer time to come around, right? Um, all right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. And then we have our consent agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And then we have our most favorite motion. Who wants to make it? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> uh -huh. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, thank you all very much. I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. And uh, stay warm.